to man can we just worship God for a few more minutes for a few people to join before we start let's just worship God with this music I just love to worship him father thank you is there no one like you Hey, you are the living God Join me to worship the King of Kings Oh, join me to worship this God Welcome to man to man We worship you, we worship you, we worship you hey. We are live on Facebook and Instagram Feel free to connect with us to anyone. Malika Bayala. We have like three more minutes to worship, then we go right into what we have. Please allow us to worship God for a few more minutes. Makabaya lava is in no one like you. Mama ya lava kelebe pula di daraba daraba di 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 ba 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 ba. You are my friend. You are the living God. Oh, no one like you. before we go into what we have. Two more minutes. Bear with me, people. Yandara Kabalade. Yeah. Ah, you are the living God. Oh, we worship you, the King of Kings. Oh, Lord, we bless you. Lord, we bless you. Mali Kabayala Bashata. Yeah. Malanda Labayala <coughs> you are the living God. Is there no one like you? Equeme, Equeme. Ay, 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 ay. Equeme, you are the living God. Is there no one like you? Maliga la valle de rebosu no la valle de rebosu la valle de rebosu la valle de la valle de rebosu la valle de rebosu la valle de la de la Keep on at the background. Um, oh, thank you, Jesus. Good afternoon, good morning, good day, wherever you are. 
Welcome to Man to Man, another edition of Man to Man. We bless the name of the Lord. This is the day that he has made. We'll be glad, we'll rejoice. Oh, we give God the glory. We give God all the praise. We give all, all, all glory to the King of Kings. Yeah, for the past two Fridays, I, I, I want to thank you for welcoming me into your space, for giving me part of your time, giving me part of your precious time. Time is all that we have as ours. We can choose to use it anyhow, any which way we want. And that you have allowed me a part of your 24 hours is a big deal. It's not a small deal at all. It is a big deal. And I appreciate that so, so very much. You have a million and one things that could you can use your time for, but you have chosen to spend it with me. Thank you very much. I trust God that you will be blessed mightily in the name of Jesus Christ. I welcome you on Instagram, on Facebook. Thank you for joining me. Hallelujah to Jesus. Oh, we, we thank God. We thank God. We have been talking for the past. This will be the third Friday. We'll be dealing with a topic and it's been, it's been amazing. It's, but I must confess to you that it has been an eye-opener even to me. Even to me. Um, in the course of in the course of last week, the Lord was opening my eyes to new dimension to this topic. Absolutely, areas that I, I didn't I didn't I didn't prepare for. I didn't even work on, and the Lord was opening. I remember last Friday I opened the discussion with what the Holy Spirit ministered to me right after the upper week's um, discussion. What the Holy Spirit ministered to me about spontaneous blessing. If you were not, um, if you have not watched it, just go to my WhatsApp, uh, sorry, excuse me, we'll go to my uh, YouTube channel and watch it. The, the part two and the part one. You will be blessed. And if you have not subscribed yet to my channel, please, um, I will appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. There are other contents there for you to be blessed with. So God has been really expounding this topic. I actually, maybe I thought at most we'll have we'll spend two Fridays dealing with it. But now this is the third one, and I hope we'll be able to conclude today. Who teaches the boy? Who teaches the boy to become a man? We have done a bit on it. Uh, today, I'll do a little bit of recap of last, last uh, Friday's. Because we started with some points about what do you teach? What do you teach your boy? Again, don't forget how we started two Fridays ago was to establish that there are many things that can teach a boy to become a man. Part of it is experience. Experience is not the best teacher. It's a common saying that experience is the best teacher. No, experience is not the best teacher. The Holy Spirit is the best teacher. But experience is also a good teacher. It, you can learn a lot from experience. You can learn a lot from your, from environment, education can teach you a lot. But we, 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 we came to the point where we realized scripturally, where we recognize scripturally that the parent, particularly the father, is given the responsibility, the duty to train a boy, to teach the child. In some cultures, they push that to, to, the, to the mother. See your child, and so on and so forth. No, it is an error. The responsibility of training up a child is on the man. Thank God for the grace of God upon the single parents, the single mothers who are doing a fantastic job. Yes, God is faithful. God, God comes through for you. But I'm saying in a, in a, in a normal system, in a way, and that's why God created man and woman, got them to marry. You have the father, you have the mother, and that is understanding and recognizing the responsibility. So say, so what are, are they expected to be taught? Um, please let me know. Give me a shout out if the music is 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 distracting or covering up my voice. Please very feel free to make a comment. Um, and even as we go on, make comments. Ask questions. We'll, I'll read it out. We will discuss it 
feel very, very free, please. It's meant to be, I'm not, the whole vision is not for me to necessarily preach at you. It's for me to raise some issues that we can discuss. I will just, I'm just facilitating as it were. I'm just late. So feel free to share, please. You can't be blessing life. Don't limit the, the life you'll be blessing if you share. When you share. So please share this. You know it doesn't cost anything for you to share. Just share. Someone who is not part of my friends will be blessed as you share. So feel free to share. As I was, as I was saying, I said, I listed some things. I started by talking about some things that um, you're supposed to be taught as a boy or you teach your boy and has to become a man. We have separated male and manhood. We, if, you, if you're coming with me from the first episode to this one, we know we have, this is the third one, so we know we have established the fact that the fact that you're a male does not make you a man. And I also remember saying that manhood is not referring alone or necessarily to your private part. Manhood is referring to manhood is referring to the state of being a man, the state of being a man. All right, so it's very, very important that you understand that the state of being a man, what makes you a man for that matter, is not even the money that you have. So, we talked about that teaching your boy. What do you teach your boy? You teach him. We talked about that last episode. Like I said, please feel free to check my YouTube channel for the past two episodes on this particular topic and the other ones on man to man. So we talked about you teach your boy to be a leader, not a boss. And the difference majorly is selflessness. You know, and we, 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 we tried to analyze or take example from the leadership style of Jesus Christ. The leadership style of Jesus Christ. What he did, what he was doing. Okay, so you know, like I said, that's what so you know what 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 the theologians we call Jesus was he was he was a servant leader. He was a servant leader in his leadership style, he would rather serve. That's how he led his people. And then we talked about balanced manhood. Balanced manhood. Okay, it I mean, number one, be spiritual, but you find many men. Who are not balanced in their outlook. They are not balanced in their outlook. What do I mean by that? Very spiritual. Oh yeah. God. Heaven is my goal. And so on and so forth. But then they are not. They don't know how to face life. In many other things. They don't know how to face life. For example, they don't know how to, how to treat their wives. They don't know how to deal in a society. So I, I was saying last week that some are spiritual, but they don't, they don't know how to be romantic. They don't know how to be romantic. And the woman dare not talk, but he's suffering in, she's suffering in silence. Because there's this emotional aspect of a woman. There's a financial aspect. There's a, there are three key aspects for, for a being. The, the financial, the emotional uh, 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 and also the spiritual aspect, not necessarily in that order. So you have that aspect. Yes, you pray in the morning, you fast, but there's this emotional aspect. He, she, she needs you to talk to her. She wants to talk to you. She wants to just tell you all she all that she went through throughout the day. And you come, you are so tired. Say, well, please don't bother me. She, but I sent money to your account. Yes. You know the funny thing that one of the things I always say, if money answers everything and deals with anything, have you noticed that some, I hear stories like that, you find, you find madame in the house having an affair with the driver, having an affair with the megad. Unbelievable, yes. The yoga gives everything, everything in quote. The yoga gives everything in quote, yet... The madam is lacking in a particular thing. So, I'm talking about balanced manhood. The man, yes, you're very spiritual, but are you, are you, are you dealing with other areas? Next Friday, by the grace of God, we want to talk about focus more on what I call taking responsibility. Three areas of responsibility for a man. Uh, we're going to be dealing with that um, 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 in detail. So. 
you find some who are so worldly. Some men, in the name of, okay, yeah, let's us be social and so on and so forth, they are so worldly that the spiritual aspect is lacking. Again, don't forget we're talking about balanced manhood. They are so worldly that the, the spiritual aspect is lacking. So you have to balance it. All right? So um, then one other thing that we talked about is emotional and mental maturity. We talked about that for a while. But I'm going to add something today, part of the emotional, uh, that I didn't touch on last week before we go, uh, you know. So we're going into the new thing now. Those are just a recap of what we had last Friday and the Friday before. So today... I'm going to be talking, starting out by continuing, I'm still talking about what you teach a boy. What, or let me put it, what a boy should know in him becoming a man. What a boy should know in him becoming a man. We have shifted a little bit from, we have shifted a little bit from who teaches the boy. I'm now dwelling on what a boy should know that will make you a man, that, that, that takes you on your journey of manhood. What a boy should know hallelujah what a boy should know and then we i touched on emotional emotional maturity so let me go to another aspect of it that i call emotional intelligence it's like a subtopic of emotional maturity but it's let's call it emotional intelligence emotional what does that mean the ability to one identify understand and manage emotions all right emotional intelligence so when you're measuring iq emotional iq where does your emotional intelligence how do you rate it the ability to first of all identify secondly understand then number three manage emotions a man one of the things that make you a man is the ability, I'm going to repeat that, to identify your emotion, what is happening, to understand it. You know, a woman can say, but oh, what's wrong with you? I don't even know. I don't even know. A woman can say that. And for many of you, wives, you know, you, you have wives who can, you can resonate with what I'm saying. What's happening to you? I don't even know. And she's just reacting. But a man, you must identify and understand, try and trace your emotions, and then, more important or most importantly, manage your emotions. Manage your emotions. A man, as a, it's so key. How do you handle a situation? How do you manage your, your, your emotions? How do you deal with it? Okay? Listen to me. Managing of emotion has nothing to do with tears or no tears. Oh, I won't cry. That is physical. Okay? I can I promise you that that is physical. Oh, he cries. He doesn't cry. No, no, no. That. How do you deal with it in, other, in a way that it doesn't, it doesn't affect? Don't forget, if you've been following me, one of the things we do in Jesus' Men intercessors, you'll understand that we have, we have established that a man's destiny. There are so many people that are tied to your destiny as a man. There are so many people that are looking up to you as a man. There are so many people that are looking, looking to you as a man. They are, they are, they are, what your decisions, decisions you take or don't take affect a lot of destinies tied to you. It, it's so key. So when you manage your emotions... If a man's mood is bad in the house, everybody will scatter. Everybody will, will run to a corner if a man's mood is bad. All right? So, it, it, it's, it's very important to manage your emotions, to deal with your emotions, to be able to control your emotions. And I read up something. I'm going to share that with you. You know, and... and, 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 and you know, there's somebody called something awkward intelligence. Oh, sorry, awkward silence. Awkward silence. That's one of the key ways to, 
to manage your emotions. One of the key ways to, to determine your emotional intelligence. Are you emotionally intelligent? All right? And one of the ways to deal with it and to help your intelligence, in fact, to increase it. Let me, you know that scripture that says, even when a fool keeps quiet, he appears wise. I always tell men, you're talking. You're, you don't need to give impression that you know everything. I know you are the king in your own house, but how wonderful will it be if your son asks you a question and says, okay, fine, let's, let's look for the answer together. Let's search for the answer together. I know the pressure is upon the man to give the answer to everything. Hello, you are not Jesus. You are not God. There is nothing wrong in you saying, I don't know this. Let's search it out together. You know, the story is told of, of, of many of us in our generation, many, many parents who always tell their, their children that they were the ones that took first in the class. I took first. Then some of them, the, the people we get to know that they didn't do so well in class. This pressure to always want to portray to your child that you are perfect puts unnecessary pressure on that child. Puts unnecessary pleasure, pressure on that child. Let the child know that you are also a human being. Let the child know that you, are, you also made mistakes. Direct the child to Jesus. It is, there was one time that <laughs> my children asked me, you know, we were having like a, a family you know, we're just having a nice time talking. And, you know, and then one of them asked me, I said, Dad, can you tell me that you have never lied? Can you tell me that you have never lied? Have you ever lied? I think that's the way he put it. Have you ever lied? All right? I mean, okay? Now, this is it. I'm telling them not to lie. Have you ever lied? So you ask, if I say I've ever lied, will they not take it as an opportunity? If you to have lied, then I'm free to lie. Or... If you say you have never lied, am I not lying at that moment in time? And that is why you need to point them to Jesus. You also have your limitations, you have your infirmities. So it was a good opportunity for me to tell them, yes, I want you want to you want to you want me to be a role model, you want me to mentor you, but the one that is without fault is Jesus. I had have lied before. But I am also working my way to, to be a better Christian, to be this, to be that. Where your child sees you also as a human being. For many of us who are ministers of God, you, you, through no fault of yours, you may unconsciously be putting your, your child under pressure because he sees how fluently you pray. He sees how well you speak. You quote scriptures and he's intimidated. He thinks that he too has, if he doesn't meet up with that level of your spiritual maturity, he's failing. You need to let him teach him how to start in his own at his own level. You need to encourage him to say, Fine, it's good, it's good. I also was like this at a point in time. When they think that if they don't pray as well as you are praying. Maybe they are failing. Maybe they are not as spiritual. That is not true. So you need to let them know. Now, I was talking about awkward silence. One of the ways to deal with, one of the ways to deal with your, 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 how do I put it now? One of the ways to deal with or to help your emotional, emotional intelligence. That's a better way to put it. One of the ways to help your emotional intelligence is by, by employing what is called awkward intelligence. I'm going to uh, awkward silence. Awkward silence. Please feel free to 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 um, make comments, um, ask questions, share. Thank you, Pastor TJ. God bless you. God bless you too. God bless you too for sharing. I know. We are all of you are busy, but thank you for sharing your time with me. So we bless the name of the Lord. So we are talking about awkward silence. 
What that means is there's a situation and you do not, you are not under pressure to reply immediately. You are not under pressure to reply, to say something. I must talk. If I don't say anything, oh, it will appear as if I'm stupid. It may appear as if, oh, I don't know what to say. No. There is what is called awkward silence. It might be awkward, but as you master it, it becomes less awkward. In other words, there is a situation where you take your time before you reply. You take your time before you respond. You see, the, the human training is before somebody says something, you also talk. So that that's what shows you that you are current, you know this, and the one that keeps quiet appears to be stupid. It's the other way, and that's why, you know, the scripture says, you know, be slow to speak, be quick to listen. It's scriptural. The awkward silence concept is scriptural. Be slow to speak, be quick to listen. Make sure you listen. Make sure you hear, but be slow to speak. When you are slow to speak, you are, I'll, I'll give you some of the advantages of awkward silence now. You can call it any other thing you want because, but the truth of the matter is that when a situation comes, take your time. By the grace of God, it's something that I've trained myself over the years. In fact, on a matter, I may not talk for months. <laughs> on a matter, I may not say anything for months. There is the fear of people taking advantage of that. It's okay. But when the Lord now gives you utterance, it cannot begin say. The Bible says, do not worry what you will say. When you open it, I will feel it. In other words, it is the Holy Spirit that should guide your utterances, not your brain. It is if you can get to a point where you allow the Holy Spirit to speak through you. In fact, I know someone that all, people are always saying, oh, you can't fault what he says. Ah, if he says something to you now, ah, hey, if I just say, oh, he's always, he's, he, you can't win him in an argument. Oh, you can't win him in an argument. He, whatever he says, you can it's because he takes time before he speaks. By the time he speaks, he has already articulated his point. He has already looked at the pros and cons. And more importantly, the Holy Spirit has, has taken charge of his tongue. Remember what um, the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 1. He says, come, let us reason together. Wow. Let us reason together. We need to reason. Reason with the Holy Spirit. What should I say? You, you know the, the devil will be telling you, oh, you, are too, you are too quiet. Talk, talk, talk. No, no, no. If you can master this concept. Don't forget the scripture says, if anybody can master his tongue. Anyone that can master his tongue. Anyone that can control his tongue. Anyone that can decide what comes out of this mouth. And as a Christian, there is no better way to control and to decide it except by the Holy Spirit. So what does, what does awkward silence help you to do? Number one, it helps you to deal with challenging questions. It helps you to deal with challenging questions. You may be tempted to just spit something out. But no, it helps you to deal with challenging questions when you have this concept of awkward silence. It's awkward because maybe everybody's waiting for you to talk. It's uncomfortable because maybe everybody's waiting for you to say something. If you allow that pressure, there's a challenging question given to you. Nobody's measuring your time for you. You are not in... Um, who wants to be a millionaire? Please, by excuse me, let me reduce this a little bit. It's making me to scream. Okay? You are not in who wants to be a millionaire that they are timing your, your tele television quiz. Okay? So, 
Do you know there was a time they brought a matter to Moses? And, and Moses didn't have an answer. You know what he did? He said, give me time. Let me go and consult with the king of kings. And he did. Look, imagine all the millions of Israelites waiting for the master G Moses to talk. The leader. The, the leader that, 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 that there's no other like leader. He's there. And they are waiting for him. Deal with this. We are the, even you find pastors also, they must think they must have an answer for everything. And instead of waiting for the Holy Spirit to illuminate them and to speak to them, they just say anything that comes to their mind. So, awkward silence, uncomfortable silence, the concept helps you, helps you to deal with challenging questions. Number two, it helps you not to say what you think the person wants to hear. All right? I'm saying that a boy that, that learns that, a man that learns that, we go far. He helps you not to say the things that you think the man or the people listening to you want to hear. You know, being politically correct. You want to say what we tingle their ears, what will make them happy. No. But when you tarry, it helps you to say the right things. So that leads us to the third point that it helps you to speak with conviction. In other words, what eventually now comes out of your mouth, you are saying it with conviction. You believe what you are saying. You believe what you are saying. You you are you are you as a conviction in you because you are not just saying it because it just came out of nowhere or, or it just came because you wanted to impress them. You you had practiced that uncomfortable silence. By the time you speak, it it was it's with genuine conviction that you are speaking. And of course, obviously, obvious obvious um, awkward silence, uncomfortable silence helps you to think. It's something you need to practice. Actually, it doesn't just come. It's something you need to practice. It's something you need to 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 work on. It helps you. It gives you time to think. You you have dealt with that pressure of just opening your mouth to say something. You know, don't forget the scripture I started with. When a fool keeps quiet, he appears wise. Because you find people who are just, especially men, who just want to dominate discussions, dominate everything, say all kinds of... And that is, believe me, you know, don't forget, the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If you just talk like that, People have spoken before that has made them to lose respect by what came out of their mouth. If only they could keep quiet. If only they are kept quiet. But when some, some you will see them, oh, what a handsome man. What Wow, what a well beat man. What this and that. For them to just open their mouth and say, wow, you wish you had not spoken. Okay? And then when you practice this uncomfortable silence concept, it puts you in the driver's seat. It puts you in the driver's seat. It makes you, you know, you already know what you want to say. You articulate about it. You control the discussion. You control the discussion. It puts you, it, 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 that's just the best way I can put it. It puts you in the driver's seat. You know when you're in the driver's seat, you can control, you can redirect your discussion. You can redirect it. In the way that you think or you believe the discussion should go. You can redirect it. Why? You've had time to articulate it. Okay? And it makes you calm. I'm telling you what will help you in your process and journey of becoming a man. It calms you. When, when, when we're talking, we're still talking about uncomfortable silence. The concept of uncomfortable silence, it calms you. A situation comes and you, 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 it calms you when you are not under pressure to talk. When you are not under pressure, you find people, two people are talking and they are interjecting each other. You know, in, in, in primary school, I don't know whether they say this, they, 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 they still use that. When I was primary secondary school, they say barbarians talk in thousands. You know, somebody's talking, another person is talking, another person is talking. 
Watch out for the one that keeps quiet for the other one to talk. Watch out. That is the wise one. When you have five, six, seven people, everyone wants to say something, want to show that they know they know what is happening. Watch out for the one that keeps quiet. Watch out for the one that is observing. When he speaks, others will listen. I, I just pray God will give you this understanding of this uncomfortable silence concept I'm talking about. When he speaks, don't forget now that as a man, the glory is already there, the, the leadership all rise there. And then you now find yourself that you are not quick to speak. But you are quick to listen. You are slow to speak. Quick to listen. So when you are slow to speak. Quick to listen. When you speak. Things happen. When you speak. So it gives you calmness. It increases your confidence. As a matter of fact, is an indication of confidence. When you are not too eager to speak and, and run on, run your mouth and all of that, it, it increases and it produces, it produces better and more quality answer. Why? Because you have dug deep into the recesses of your spirit. So what comes out of a man is quality. It's not just surface. It is quality. Alright? It is quality. What comes out of a mouth is quality. So it produces that uncomfortable silence. The concept of uncomfortable silence produces quality answer. For those who are just joining us who are still dealing with uncomfortable silence, you know, yeah, that, that when a situation arises, you train yourself not to be quick to talk. It's part of being a man. Not to be quick to talk. Not to be quick to address or attack an issue. And we have listed some, some, some points. We have listed some points. And I said, when you practice this concept of uncomfortable silence, and why are we talking about uncomfortable silence? Because it's going to be uncomfortable for a while, until you master it, it's going to be uncomfortable. Because you will think everybody's waiting for you to talk. You will think everybody's waiting for you. Oh, so it, it, at that moment, is uncomfortable. At that moment, is awkward. But when you master it, when you master it, it helps you to produce quality answer. That's when, when you talk, you find people as a, hmm, hmm. Hmm. They are responding to what you are saying unconsciously. Why? Because what is coming out of your mouth is quality. But why? You have spent time. This, it may be uncomfortable. After a while, you don't even see it as uncomfortable anymore. Why? Because you have practiced it. So you know before you open your mouth to talk, you have dug deep into into the deep recesses of your spirit man. And then it helps you, hopefully, to say what you mean and mean what you say. You must have heard it being said many times. Say what you mean and mean what you say. That is part of integrity. We talked about integrity, I think, last Friday. You know, one of the things we should teach our boy, why not you teach even as a young man watching me that you should learn is to have integrity. Be able to say, no, if he says something, he stand, he's standing by it. Integrity. Okay? We talked about that at length. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay? So we've talked about emotional intelligence. I am going to, let, let me go to the next one uh, for the next few minutes. Let me go to the next one for the next few minutes. Uh, then we, we will we will have a look at it from another dimension next next um, next Friday. The type the topic for next Friday is taking responsibility as a man, as a young man, married or not, taking responsibility. We're going to be talking about that in detail. I'm going to touch it briefly now, but. We're going to go deeper into it next week by the grace of God, taking responsibility. So, again, we are saying what you, what a man, what, what makes a boy to become a man 
is when he learns to take responsibility. When he learns to take responsibility. That's one of the key things that, that, that identifies, that separates a boy from a man. What does it mean to take responsibility? It is to be accountable to yourself and to others. Not only to yourself, but to others. To be accountable, not only to yourself, but to others. To be accountable. Let me repeat that. To be accountable. Not only to yourself and to others. But also to others. You are accountable. What does that mean? You are looking. You are saying, no, no, no. I have to give account of what I'm doing. You know, I'm not saying to be accountable to God. Yes. Alright? But let's, let's limit it to this. We're going to talk about God subsequently. Okay? But you understand, to take responsibility is to be accountable to yourself. Alright? To look at yourself and say, no, this is what I should do. I take responsibility for what I've done. You are accountable for your thoughts. You are accountable for your feelings. You are accountable for your behavior. Alright? You, you, you know, it's amazing. Many times when I watch a lot of things, particularly, permit me, for those in Nigeria, um, um, Yoruba films, um, Nollywood, and, um, and, you know, when you have followed, the, the, when you have followed the, the story for a while, and that guy does a terrible thing, by the time they get to say, ah, it's the devil, I'm sorry, it's the devil, it's the devil, and many, uh, unbelievable, they don't take responsibility. It is easier to push it to somebody else. Now, the thoughts that are in your heart, is that, is that, is that, the thoughts, you have to be accountable for it. When you realize that you can't just say, oh, it's the devil. You, somebody, it's somebody else that made you to think the way you are thinking. I mean, no. Last week, I was talking about those who beat their wives. And in all the counseling that I've, I've done, you know, in all the counseling that I've done, I have never... Well, on top of my head, now I cannot remember a man that admitted or took responsibility for his actions. Most men, most violent men, most men that beat their wives, in counseling them, what they will always say is, she's the one that caused it. She's the one that caused it. She's the one that made me bitter. And I'm like, Really? She's the one that took your hand and started beating herself. Who controlled that hand? Who controlled the decision of that hand? I, I, so, and believe me, I have, I've really met a man that will... In fact, the truth of the matter is that the day the man admits that, oh, I have done something terrible, most times that's the beginning of deliverance. But the man that is always giving excuses, the man that is always giving excuses, is the one, he's not ready to change. Ah, you better talk to her. She's the one. If not this, if not that. You have to take responsibility of your thoughts. Let me go back quickly to um, emotional intelligence. We all have different temperaments. We all have different ways that we deal with issues. And I said that emotional intelligence is for you to identify those emotions and know how to take action. So, for example, now, I must be able to say, okay, how do I deal with my anger? Take practical steps. One thing, yes, I'm going to pray. God, God, deal with my anger. God, help me with this anger. And if you have an issue with anger, yes, you pray. But you also take action. For example, it could be keeping quiet. Another one could be walking away from that discussion. If you know that you find issues with controlling your anger. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, as Akitayo says, we need a version of this for women. All right, we thank God. Yes, God will help us. But you see, that is the kind of comment I get as well when we're having some discussions with women. When we're having discussions with women, 
you find the women also saying, wow, we need this for men. We need men to hear this. That's one of the things that we hear over and over again, over and over again. We need men to hear this women. And then, God helping us, we have a couples forum. We have a couples forum. And at that couples forum, sometimes you find that men don't turn up. Sometimes they send their women. <laughs> they send their women and sometimes only they, I, I, and in one of the episodes I think I, I talked about this this issue of uh, of men taking you know um, uh, you know there's a there's a topic that I did about the danger in in men not being as spiritually active as women um, if you have not uh, watched it just check my YouTube channel for it the danger of, of men not being as spiritually active um, as women. So you find that, and one of the things that I said there is that you find that overtrained women have married an untrained man. Overtrained women or over an overtrained woman has married an untrained man. So the one of the one of the uh, the the assignments of Jesus' men intercessors is to challenge men, to be a forum for men to serve God, to prioritize God, to know these things. Uh, and uh, thank you for that comment. Again, praise the Lord. So, as a matter, that's why you find even on this platform there are women who are watching presently. I always say that, for example, the principles of success are the same. The principles of success are the same. Whether it be business, ministry, career, the principles are the same. The only thing is that when you are you just apply that principle or those principles to your peculiar situation, the principles of ministry, whether you are a music minister like uh, King Akintayo, or you are a preacher, or you are a drama minister, filmmaker, or you are an intercessor, the principle of success are the same. All you just need to do is to apply it. To the peculiarity. So even if, uh, even though yes, this is man to man, it's about men. I find women watching; they can also gain from it. It's not they can learn from it. They can, they can, they can tap into it. It's not oh, they are talking to men. These principles can help you as well. Hallelujah. So it's in fact one of the things that we do in Jesus Men Intercessors when we hold the program is we encourage the men to bring their wives. And I always say for uh, the GMI that sincerely, when the Holy Spirit told me that, it was strange because I rarely see such things. If it is a men's program, they expect only men to attend. If it's a women's program, we expect only women to attend. But when we are preparing for Jesus' men intercessors, the Lord said, ask them to bring their wives. And when I, you know, and I began to see the reason more and more. The reason, it's very good when husband and wife are on the same page. It's not for the man to be uh, A levels or in the university, and then the the woman is in the primary school. If there is so much gap, they can't be compatible. Or for the woman to be in the university already, I'm talking, you know, I'm talking figuratively. For the woman to be in the university of knowledge, of exposure, of of intelligence, and then the the man, the husband is in the primary school. They, it is a disaster waiting to happen. So when God opened that to my understanding, I always, even though we do man to man, even though we do um, Jesus men intercessors, I always encourage by the instruction of the Lord that bring your wife, let them also hear, hear together, learn together. Okay, my time is running fast. Like I said, we are going to be talking fully more, or let me say more on. Taking responsibility, and I've, I've just started it. I said you have to be accountable to be to take responsibility means to be accountable to yourself and to and to others. All right, to be accountable to yourself and to others. You are accountable for your thoughts. All right. So even if the devil that put the thought inside my heart, he says you resist the devil, he will flee. Okay. We're going to be talking about a vacuum next Friday, okay? Please don't miss it. We're going to be talking about a vacuum. We're going to break this down fully next Friday by the grace of God. So, you know, 
you have to be accountable for your feelings. That's again why the Bible says flee. Flee. It's going to be there before you. It's going to be there. Flee. Next, next Friday, we're going to be talking about the difference between looking and seeing. Hearing and listening. It says flee all appearances. So if you don't flee, it means you really want it. Okay? You really want it. You says so you 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 are you must be accountable for your feelings. You want you may, you also be accountable. You always be accountable for your behavior. See, if you understand that, if you understand that, it will help you. Thank you for that comment. I have learned from this conversation so impacting. God bless you. God bless you. We all, someone says, we all need to take responsibility for our actions. That's on Instagram. We all need to take responsibility for our actions. When you realize, look, look at a society that pushes things. Permit me to, to quote Karl Marx. Of course, you know Karl Marx is not. But you see, there is something he said. Those times when they were doing Marxism and all of that stuff. He says, religion is the opium of the people. He went to the extreme. But you see, when you, when you don't take responsibility in some cultures, in some climes, they are always quick to push everything to God. But that's not scriptures. They always ask God. Let me give an example. God forbid. But in times past, there have been air, uh, air crash. A plane crashes. Let me use Nigeria as an example. A plane crashes. What is the next thing? Let us learn from this. It has happened, but let us learn from it. You know what some people say? Don't worry. Um, they say it in my language. I'm more alone on it. Or say that means that means it's God that, that did it. Or say if God says it will happen, it will happen. Don't worry. It shifts the sense of responsibility and accountability from your head to God. Whereas you need to be responsible to say, where did we make mistakes? Were we supposed to service the aircraft that we didn't service the aircraft? That we supposed to did the pilot, what did the pilot say? Take responsibility. And because they don't take responsibility, those things continue. In countries where they take responsibility, they learn from it. I always say, yes, like some of you, I live in the United Kingdom. I always tell people from other countries that there is nothing happening in Nigeria or Africa that has never happened in, in, in the Western world. There is nothing. There have been starvation. There have been plagues. There have been all kinds of things in their own time. Wars. Civil war. All kinds of things. The difference between the Western world and the Africa is that one will take responsibility and learn from it. The other one will excuse it. In fact, the good thing, uh, the, the, the quick thing for the for the for the politicians to say, say our distractors is our detractors is our enemy. Whatever, even if it is the enemy, let us look at what they are saying. Does it make sense? Are you actually guilty? Are you actually guilty of what it is being said? No, it's our enemy. It's our political opponent. They will leave the matter. They will leave the matter on ground and begin to face so-called imaginary enemy. Whereas what they did is, is wrong. What they did is wrong. Okay? The people in those climes don't take responsibility. You drive roughly. Many years ago, I'm going to give this example then and we'll have to round up for today. Many years ago, I was traveling from Ibadan to Bin to Benin, no, to Enugu. I was traveling from Ibadan to Enugu. 
and I took a public transport many years ago. Between Benin and uh, Delta State, Asaba. Between Benin and Asaba, the, the rain has started little, you know, but it became so heavy. By the time we were leaving Benin, the rain had become so, so heavy. The driver continued to drive. Okay, fine. Then the wiper stopped working. The wiper of the car stopped working. The driver continued to drive. His dental I was sitting in the front. Not only was he driving, he was speeding. The wiper was not working in the middle of heavy rain. I got so angry with myself, with him. Why are you driving? Why can't we park and wait? Either you, 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 you repair the wiper or wait until this thing drives. Then they begin, ah, are you afraid? Oh, God, are you afraid? Don't worry. God will protect us. My goodness. God will protect you. Your wiper stopped working in the middle of the rain. You are speeding. You say God will protect you. Shifting of responsibility. You couldn't park and say, let's do something with this wiper. Let's wait. That is your responsibility. You say, don't worry. God will protect us. And then some other silly passengers, ah, oh, God, you're afraid. Ah, don't be afraid. Ah, ah. It's not a matter of afraid. It's about common sense. Taking responsibility. I say, no, we can't do it this way. Taking responsibility. We're going to be dealing fully and squarely with this next Friday by the grace of God. And God helping us. I want to thank you again and again and again for allowing me into your space. If you have not subscribed to my channel, David Koloki on YouTube, please uh, do so. I will really appreciate it. I will see you again next Friday, same time on Instagram and Facebook Live, dealing with taking responsibility. We're going to go deeply and fully into it. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I appreciate you. May the Lord bless and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and give you peace in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend in the name of Jesus.